hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a floating wine bottle holder. Well, I'm sure you guys have seen these before. They seem to be on every YouTube channel out there. Now, I made them years ago and the process that I would use back then would be to laminate three quarter inch thick pieces of contrasting wood together and on the one side that shows I would scroll designs on it or personalized information on there just to make them a little more special. But for today's purposes I'm only really showing you the method of how to make them and you can tweak it however you want. If you want to customize, customize. But for the purposes of today's show, I have no intentions of keeping the wine holder. It's strictly for demonstration. And we're going to start it off with some three quarter inch thick pine. Well, the first step in preparing our stock is that we need to rip our boards. And for that, we're going to get rid of the cross cut blade and install a ripping blade in the table saw. After checking that your blade is square to the table, you just want to rip the one edge to make sure that the side of your board is square. Now readjust your ripping fence to a dimension of four inches and rip a strip off of your piece of pine. Well, now that you've got your board cut to your width, you want to change your blade up in your table saw. You get a cross cut blade put in there. Guys, these blades have a purpose, ripping for ripping, cross cutting for cross cutting. And really, for the amount of time that it takes to change the blade, you should really be putting the proper blade in for the proper operation. It just gives you a much cleaner cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that blade, the cross cut that is, in the table saw. I'm going to get my miter fence and I'm going to square off the one end and then we're going to cut this to a length of, oh, I don't know, let's say 12 inches. The next step is I'm going to get a trim router and I'm going to install a quarter inch uh, roundover bit in the trim router and we're going to route three of the sides on both sides of the board. We're going to leave one edge. There's no sense in, in routing it because we're going to cut it off. But you want to do the end grain first only because if you get any tear out, hopefully when you do the long grain, it will clean that up and eliminate any tear out. Now, the other thing I want to point out is what I've got in my hands right here. And if you're going to be doing any routing, just make sure that you've got your hearing protection on. Just a quick tip, guys. Sometimes in order to do this sort of routing using a trim router, I find that installing it here in the face vise of my bench basically turns it into a makeshift router table. Now it's not uh, ideal for larger projects, but for something small like this wine holder, it, it works really, really well. So just a little tip for you, install your trim router in your front vise and uh, use it as a makeshift router table. Well, now it's time to mark the hole for our wine bottle. And what you want to do is the top of your wine holder, which is going to be one of the routed edges, not this flat edge down here, but this routed edge, we're going to come down from the top of that edge three inches. Now, of course, you can modify it, whatever you want to do. It doesn't have to be three inches. Do it whatever you like. If you want a little closer to the top, you can go closer to the top. And we know that it's two inches will be the center here because this is four inches wide. The center is two inches. So down from the top three and then in the middle, which will be at two inches. Now it's time to head over to the drill press. I have the drill press table set 
to about a 40 degree angle. Um, it's closer to 35 degrees here actually and I've also got a 1 and 3 eighths of an inch diameter Forstner bit installed and what we want to do is we want to drill a through hole with this Forstner bit at that 35 degree angle. So if you're going to be drilling on an angle like this make sure you've got it really well clamped in place because as that Forstner bit starts going in this edge of the Forstner is going to want to rip into that board and tear it out of its place. So let's give this a try and see how we make out. You just want to take it nice and slow. I can already see that I'm a little bit off kilter there as far as being centered. So I'm just going to make a quick adjustment before carrying on with this hole and then get these clamps back down in place. We should be good there now. Let's give this a try. Now that you've got that angled hole in there, just take a piece of 220 grit sandpaper and just give a little sanding around the edge just to take off that sharp edge. You just want to, you know, clean it up, give it a little softer look. You don't really want that harsh, harsh, sharp drilled edge there. Well, the next step in the project is that we need to cut the bottom edge. And the bottom edge is the one that we did not route the quarter inch round over in. And what we're going to do for that is we're going to tilt the table saw blade at the same angle that we drilled the hole. And in this case, it's going to be 35 inches. Now, it's not precise. It could be 35, 40, you could do 45, you can do whatever you like but you want to try to get the angles matching as close as possible to what you drilled. So I'm going to set this somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 degrees. Uh, we're at 35.35 there. I'm not concerned about 0.35. This is a wine bottle holder. This isn't uh, exquisite fine woodworking and uh, a crazy, oh, I don't know, something nuts like a roll top desk. <laughs> this is a simple wine holder. So now that we have the saw blade set, we need to cut the bottom off of our piece. But you want to make sure now that the angle that you're cutting is the same as the angle of the hole. In other words, you don't want them like this. You want them both going on the same plane. So just double check and triple check, make sure that you're cutting it the right way. And then once you get that done, cut it at your angle. And once you give this thing a good sanding, of course, all you have to do is when you have your wine at your table, you sit it in the holder just like that and whoo, magic, right? No, it's not magic. It's nothing more than balance. But this is how you would set it up on your table. And of course, the wine is all to the front, you know, keeping the cork wet, all that kind of jazz. I'm not a wine guy. I don't even drink. So there it is. And... 
and there you have it. A floating wine bottle holder. Guys, I know this isn't the prettiest piece of wood and probably not the prettiest project. In fact, it's one of the most simple projects that you will make in your shop. It is a flat board with some routing, one angled cut and an angled drill hole. Now, is it a fun project? They're all fun. You hear me say it every week. If you're making sawdust, it's a good thing, whether it's a great intricate project or a simple one like this. You know, customize this one however you like, guys. You can add scrolling to it, wood burning to it. You could stain it. You could light it on fire, add some accents that way. You can do whatever you want to this thing. Make it wider, make it thicker. If you don't like the stability of that three quarter because it can be a little wobbly, double it. Make it an inch and a half if that makes you feel better. Whatever you want, it's your project. That 35 degree angle that we cut in the bottom, well, you know what? That's negotiable too. I've seen them done from 30 up to 45 and more. You can do whatever you like. This is your project. Play with it, adjust it, change that angle, change the hole. Speaking of the hole, there's big debates on whether or not that hole should be angled. And I see a lot of people that just put it in straight and your bottle is up on this weird angle and whatever. That's fine too. If that, if that is what works for you, then that's what you should do. However, if you like the bottle a little more flat, but you don't have a drill press table and you really don't want to do that angled hole because it's scary clamping it in and stuff like that, drill the through hole square to the board, but increase the size of the hole to allow the bottle to sit down a little more on the tilt in that straight hole. The other thing that you can do, and I've also done this, is drill the through hole and then on the oscillating drum sander, I just lowered that hole or the board down over the oscillating drum, turned it on and then tilted the board up so that it's angling that hole for me. Now that method does not provide a nice clean hole like we've got here, but yeah, it's a little more rustic, a little more hand done, but you can refine it and sand it the way you want and make it your own. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this show. It's mostly the method of how to make it instead of this fine woodworking thing. Um, it's a shorter show than normal, but sometimes that's a good thing. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me again this week. I hope you've enjoyed the project. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you're going to try it out. And I hope you're going to join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.